In this lecture, we will understand initial value theorem. I will first give you the theorem and then we will prove it. And this theorem is our 13th property. And to understand this theorem, let's take one time domain signal Ft and let's say this signal is having the Laplace transform equal to Fs and the initial value of this signal Ft f0 plus will be equal to limit s tending to infinity the Laplace transform fs when multiplied to s so this is the initial value theorem and this theorem is applicable only when signal ft satisfies these two conditions the first condition says signal ft must be equal to 0 when t is less than 0. This means from t equal to minus infinity to t equal to 0 minus the value of signal ft must be equal to 0. So this is the first condition. Now we will understand the second condition. According to the second condition signal ft must not contain any impulse or higher order singularities at t equal to 0. So our time domain signal ft must not contain any impulse or higher order singularities when t is equal to 0. Higher order singularities means discontinuities. So when t is equal to 0, ft must not contain any impulse or discontinuity. And if this is satisfied, we can say that condition number 2 is satisfied and if the both conditions are satisfied we will use the initial value theorem and if not we cannot use the initial value theorem now we will move towards the proof of this theorem the proof is very important to understand how we have obtained this result if you remember the differentiation in time property for unilateral Laplace transform we got differentiation of time domain signal ft n times we will have the Laplace transform equal to s power n multiplied to fs where fs is the Laplace transform of signal ft minus s power n minus 1 multiplied to f 0 minus minus s power n minus 2 multiplied to f dash 0 minus and so on. Now if n is equal to 1, this means we are performing the differentiation of ft one time with respect to t. We will have dft over dt as the time domain signal. dft over dt is the time domain signal and its corresponding Laplace transform will be equal to SFS S Fs minus S power 0 which will be 1 F 0 minus. So this is what we have and this clearly indicates we are having we are having the unilateral Laplace transform equal to SFS minus F0 minus when the time domain signal is DFT over DT. So DFT over DT is the input signal and the unilateral Laplace transform we are having here is the output signal and we know the output is equal to integration from 0 minus to infinity the input multiplied to integral kernel dt if t is the variable of input. So we know this point because we have discussed it in the first lecture when we were discussing about the unilateral Laplace transform and we know in unilateral Laplace transform the integration is from 0 to infinity and generally when we say unilateral Laplace transform the integration is from 0 minus to infinity. We also have the integration from 0 plus to infinity 
and that particular integration is known as zero plus definition of unilateral Laplace transform and I hope you already have the clear idea about zero minus and zero plus if you don't know what is zero minus and zero plus I will give you a small introduction the x-axis is the axis of the independent variable t and the y-axis is the axis of the function or signal we are having now t is equal to zero at this particular point t is equal to zero now when you approach t equal to zero from the left hand side and you approach close enough to zero but not equal to zero you are very very close to zero but not equal to zero we call that particular value of t zero minus now when you perform the same thing but from the right hand side you approach to zero from the right hand side and you are very very close to zero but not equal to zero then that particular value then that particular value just more than zero is known as zero plus we are calling the value we are getting from left hand side zero minus because it is just less than zero and we are calling the value we are getting from right hand side zero plus because it is just more than zero so this is the small introduction about zero minus and zero plus and now we will quickly prove our initial value theorem we know output is equal to sfs minus f zero minus s fs minus f zero minus integration zero minus to infinity the input is equal to dft over dt dft over dt multiplied to the integral kernel and we know in laplace transform the integral kernel is equal to e power minus st dt and now we will break our integration into two different integrals first we will integrate from 0 minus to 0 plus and then we will integrate from 0 plus to infinity so in this way we have integration from 0 minus to 0 plus d f t over dt e power minus st dt plus integration from 0 plus to infinity d f t over dt e power minus st dt now we will understand what will happen to the exponential e power minus st from 0 minus to 0 plus we know 0 minus and 0 plus are very very close to 0 so we can assume them to be equal to 0 and in this scenario e power minus st will become 1 so e power minus st will be 1 and now we will have integration from 0 minus to 0 plus dft over dt plus integration 0 plus to infinity dft over dt e power minus st dt and the integration of dft over dt is equal to ft so in the next step I will write the next step here so in the next step we have ft as the result of integration from the first integral and the range of integration is from 0 minus to 0 plus and we will leave the second integral as it is d ft over dt e power minus st dt now we will put the upper and lower limits of integration and we will have f 0 plus minus f 0 minus and then we will copy the second integration as it is integration from 0 plus to infinity dft over dt e power minus st dt so this is what we have and on the left hand side we have sfs minus f0 minus we have s fs 
minus f 0 minus now compare the left hand side and the right hand side you will find minus f 0 minus is there in the left hand side and also in the right hand side this makes s f s equal to f 0 plus plus this integral so we have s f s after comparison it is equal to f 0 plus plus the integral we are having here and once we are done with this particular step we will put the limit s tending to infinity on both the sides this will give us limit s tending to infinity s f s on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have f 0 plus limit will not be applicable here because there is no term of s when you put the limit s tending to infinity you will get the same result which is f 0 plus but in the second term which is the integral we are having the term with variable s so we have integration 0 plus to infinity dft over dt there is no s in this but we have s in the integral kernel so we have limit s tending to infinity e power minus st dt now when s is tending to infinity when you put infinity here in place of s you will find it is equal to zero so this whole integral will become zero the whole integral we are having here will be equal to zero so this implies limit s tending to infinity sfs is equal to f0 plus so in this way we have clearly proved our property we are having the initial value of the time domain signal ft and it is equal to limit s tending to infinity sfs if you look at the property which we saw initially you will find it is the same so in this way you can easily prove the initial value theorem and I hope you now understand what are the different steps involved in the proof and what are the different conditions we are having in the initial value theorem. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.